What is up guys? We're going to try to build ourselves an omniscience deck that's a little more streamlined, a little more competitive. Um, and we're just going to try to build it from scratch right about now. Uh, for sure, I know I want Farseek. I'm, I'm pretty much going to make this mostly ramp into like board sweepers or uh, um, uh, tutors or into more mana ramp into an end game of omniscience. Um, Gilded Lotus, Nico Bolas, Enter the Infinite, Borbidgmus, uh, and then you know maybe we'll throw in a Thrag Test or something here or there. But our end game is really just uh, revolve around Nico Bolas or the Enter the Infinite combo. So, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna just continue to build this right now. Um, one thing is Omniscience is it's a cool card, but I. You know, eight mana, like it really kills the curve. Uh, I only want to see this once, once a game. But when I do see it, I want to be sure that I do cast it. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, we're gonna just try testing with one. We want four Rangers Path. Uh, hitting the four mana and going to six is very important for this deck. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and play that. Play three, about three Chromatic Lanterns to kind of smooth out the mana, mana base. I have one Gilded Lotus. Uh, we could play multiple Gilded Lotus, but as you can see, as you will see, I'm pretty much, uh, I'm pretty, I'm going pretty high on five, six, and seven drops. So uh, here's an eight drop, Nico Bolas. This is our other win condition, one of our many win conditions. So we kind of need him in there. Increasing ambition. We're going to play three. This card, I've always wanted to see it. I would like to play four, but that might be getting too greedy. We'll play four Supreme Verdicts because we need the sweepers, that's for sure. At the five drop spot, Urban Evolution is an awesome new card. It's basically uh, uh, Explore plus Divination, pretty much. Um, and that works out pretty well, so we're going to go ahead and try two. Um, it's possible we could play more, but with the Sphinx's Revelation and other one whatnot, we don't really need that much. One Enter the Infinite, part of our combo. At 12 mana, we're only putting one in this deck. Uh, Borbidgmus, the Enrage, which is our win condition. So basically, what we, what we want to do is, if you haven't watched any of the other videos, we've gone Omniscience and to enter the Infinite into Borbidgmus, and that is game over. So we like that win, and uh, Sphinx's Revelation. We'll play two, just because in real life I only have two. Um, I guess we could play four, you know, a little more, but you know. I don't really know. I mean, I just I just think that this is a card. If we're not casting it for, sit with six mana or seven mana, then we're not getting the truest value that it could possibly give us. So that said, I only want two. Um, we'll play one Angel of Serenity. Uh, this could be replaced with um, maybe Gisela. I've seen some lists playing Gisela because uh, Gisela really slows down aggro and it really uh, puts your opponent on a quick clock. But the problem with Gisela is you kind of need a Kessig Wolfrun. Well, you know, we're going to play Kessig Wolfrun anyway. So let's go with Angel Serenity. One Angel of Serenity. Um, we'll play one Thrag Test on the main board. We'll probably want a full set of Thrag Tests in the sideboard. So we're going to add a bunch to the side. Um, we'll play two Terminus in the main board. Because this is a new format, there could be zombies and, uh, you know, Boros Charm really... <coughs> really sets back uh, Supreme Verdict. We're going to go ahead and play two Terminus in the side to kind of uh, deal with uh, Boros Charm. Um, let's play a Duress. One Duress main to keep the combo safe against Control. And then we'll add three Duress in the sideboard. Um, 32... Um, I want to play 25 lands, so we're going to go for 35 uh, non-land cards. <clears throat> what can we put? Like, if you look at a curve right now, it's extremely, extremely high. Let's save this as something. Omnidor Balance. That sounds good. Um, how do we uh, analyze deck on deckstats.com? Let's try that. What do we get? Hmm, look at this. Um... Oh, okay, yeah. No. All right. Um, what does it tell us? 
card dis mana distribution white so we got a lot of white and blue and I don't understand does that mean 18 blue cards one two six what the fuck what am I looking at six eight nine ten eleven okay I guess maybe that's the I don't know, how do we, mana source distribution, hmm, mana curve, let's get a mana curve for a little bit, what is that, this is, okay, these are, what is this, huh, what, what the fuck, why does it look this way, what is CC1, what do these fucking things mean, casting cost one, um, I guess that's what it means. Oh, it's taking into... Oh, no, it's not taking into consideration our sideboard. How could we cast in cost one? What the fuck? Why do we have Ranger's Guy? Oh, that's why. Okay. Shit. Sorry, guys. Sorry. So, let's look at Ranger's Guile. Yeah, that's not what we want here. We want Ranger's Path. So, let's go put in Ranger's Path. There we go. Where are you at? Okay. One, two, three, four. Um... Our curve is, let's just look at it. This is 3, this is 5, that's 7, this is 8, 5, 8, let's say 5, 8, 1, 12, 2, 5, 4, 4, you know, 1 or 6, 5. So, you know, we, we have like very little uh, interaction in the early game. So, I mean, what could, what could we play? Aetherize? Aetherize is an option. Return, return all attacking creatures to their owner's hands. Um, kind of becomes a second... Uh, what do we do? Aetherize? Do we have Duress on the main board? We have Duress on the main board. But, you know, that Duress is not really meant for early game play, necessarily. He's meant for more of a stall. Or, uh, you know, securing the combo. Syncopate is an option. We could play Syncopate. Um, let's try two Syncopates. Let's try let's try three Syncopates, and then we'll we'll, we'll come back and if you want to get Aetherized, then we'll play Aetherized. And let's look at the sideboard real quick. We got Thragtus, Duress, Terminus. We're weak against Aggro, so we're gonna go get Centaur Healers. We got four of these guys. Oh shit! Uh, put them in the wrong place. So. Centaur healer. Um, what else do we need? Let's get another win con condition. Door to nothingness. Uh, add that to the sideboard. Um, got terminus, duress, and slaughter games. How about that? Slaughter games. Right. Okay. So that's where we at. Now let's think about the mana base. In order to think about it, let's look at a. Let's analyze our shit on deck stats and we'll take a look at what we got, what's important. Okay, we gotta fix that board because we must do a range. Alright, let me fix that and range. Um, probabilities. Okay. This is what we want to look at. Um, we want to look at opening hand probabilities. Omniscience, low. Farseek, that's what we want. Chromatic, that's what we want. So we want things that are bo above 45%. So there's 60%, 45%, 45%, 60%, 90%, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. So, so an opening hand, we really want green and blue. So that said, I think I want a full playset of lands that are green and blue. But before we look at that, what other utility lands, non-mana producing lands do we want? I definitely think we want Kessig, Wolf Run. We want one of those. And I definitely think we want Alchemist Refuge. Aside from that, I wouldn't want to play non-mana producing lands. Uh, I want the 23 other lands to be mana producing. So we want Hinterland Harbor because it produces uh, green and blue. Got four of that. We want breeding pool because it produces green and blue. Uh, blue. One, two, three, four. 
Now what else do we want? Let's go back to the deck stats and take a look. Okay, so that, that handles opening chances, ranger's path, syncopate. What else are big cards in opening hand? Chromatic Lantern, Supreme Verdict, of course, and this is something that's double white and a blue, right? So double white, so we want to make sure that we take care of double white so we can get Sphinx's Revelation, ooh, or uh, uh, Supreme Verdict and Terminus, and Angel of Serenity. But those are only cards that ever push the white. Now, what else do we need to push that is important in the casting cost? Um, we need a Nico Bolas, that's one red, but we'll need double black. So what is an option here? Like let's let's say we play consistent lands and then we come into far seek. What are we gonna far seek for? Um, either Temple Garden, Overgrown Tomb, another breeding pool if necessarily. Right? Do we want uh what are the other lands that green produces? Uh Stomping Grounds? Uh, stomping grounds might be an option, and uh, well, but what we need the red for? We need the red for uh, Nico Bolas and what the sideboard? Is that what we need it for? For slaughter games? Is that the only thing that we need red for? Oh, Bor Borbidjmos. What is Borbidjmos casting cost? Let's see. Um, so he's double red. So we want two red sources. So. <laughs> Let's get one stomping ground, just for the sake of whatever, and then we can search the other one out with Farseek. Um, so we're getting a steam vents. No, you know what? We'll get two stomping grounds. Two stomping grounds seems smart. Hollowed fountain. We definitely want some of those. Uh, now we just need enough to get double white. Well, well let's get Temple Garden because it produces green. So let's go Temple Garden. Let's get uh, three of that. And let's get two Hollowed Fountain. Now, Temple Garden, we'll get some Petal Groves. One, two, three. Let's get a couple Glacial Fortresses. One, two. And let's get overgrown tomb one two now what else could we play hmm we're at 58 we need two more lands to kind of just put us where we want to be um, I could see playing cavern of souls this you know I'm not I'm not sold on that uh, we probably want another Temple Garden. Let's go up with one Temple Garden. Let's get a Steam Vents. How about that? Steam Vents. So that means if we need the red, we can get red, blue, and red, green. So we'll try that. So, I mean, that looks like 60. Uh, let's just take a look. And this is why I like Cockatrice, because you can do this. Analyze deck stats. Or, you know, it just gives you easy access to analyzing the deck stats. So, um, you know, for so roughly, you know, roughly half of our deck is lands, which is what we want. We want to draw into it. Um, we only got two creatures. One is Borbidimus and the other is, uh, no, what the hell? We got three creatures. Oh, okay, well, whatever. That's, uh, that's fine. The rest are sp all spells that we want to resolve. We got mostly blue. Uh... 38% and then a lot of white and then we got some green so and then we got a little red and very little black okay so this is fine because on a distribution it looks like we, c we can get um, blue and white fairly often and then we can get green all the time and the reason why now here's the thing like this is 39% of the green but over here in mana distribution, only 20% of our cards require green. But the cards that require green are cards that we want to see in the opening hand. So that is why it's important. We want at least 40% of our lands to produce that. Um, I would actually like more, um, to be honest. Because, uh, you know, but let's, let's look at uh, probabilities. Because starting hand... I mean, we want the percentage to be pretty high. 
so we got some petal 33 percent chance to get that uh, it's looking pretty good that we're gonna get green so that, that, that seems pretty decent so I'm liking the deck I'm liking what we got I'm gonna copy this for a minute and uh, we'll play test and we'll see how it turns out how about that